Okay, so today we're going to do, um, we're going to talk about probability. It's day 156. We're going to go blast from the past, mean, median, and mode, and range, and box most plots. Mean, median, mode, and range you should have learned from way back in fifth grade, right? So can you turn to your neighbors and remind them what mean, median, mode, and range are? Just really quick. Ten seconds. <laughs> Okay, so the mean is the average. We should all know how to do that now. Median is the middle number. What happens when you have two numbers in the middle? What do you do? Get the middle number. Yeah, you get the you add them together and divide by two. Good job. So let's say you had two middle numbers. Let's say there is two middle numbers that are fourteen and fourteen. They're exactly the same. Well, the middle number is fourteen. But let's say it was fourteen and sixteen. What do you do? You add fourteen and sixteen together, divide by two. So fourteen plus sixteen is thirty, and thirty divided by two is fifteen. Yeah. Yes. You have a question, Seth. Which one? For median. Okay. So really quick, just so Seth can catch up one more time, explain the median one more time to your group, and his group will explain to him one more time. Yes. Ten seconds. Okay. Thank you, everyone. That's very good. Okay, so here are the steps for today. Uh, mean, median, and mode, you should know. Um, if you're on the video, you should write these down. If you don't know these first three, write these down. If not, then if you do know them, then just write down what's over here. This, this box and whisker plots are from Algebra 1. We're going through it again because we're going to talk about distributions. We're going to talk about populations. So the big idea for today is we're trying to study like a population, okay? So we could do that as a scientist. Maybe you own a business, okay? So let's say you own a shoe business, okay? And you're like, I want to sell my shoes starting with my people, all the people in my fourth period class, okay? So would I just... As would I start my business and just start making like size two and size fifteen shoes only? No. Would I make the same amount of size shoes for like all sizes? Like I'll make the same like five size fives, five size sixes, five size sevens, five size eights. Should no, I do that? You probably shouldn't do that. You should probably um, go ahead and do like the average sizes. The average, okay. What's your size? One size eleven. Eleven. What's your size? Seven. Okay, so what's what's the average of 11 and 7 and a half? So I should just make two pairs of 10s, and I'll give you a 10, and I'll give you a 10. Is that what I should do? No. no so let's You should add those together and then divide it by two. I just did that, though. Did you? Yeah, so, like, that's a good... So, Sadal is an 11. He said 11, and then you said 7 and a half. So the average of the two is... 9.25. So, Braden, you said you get the average, so I should make two pairs of 9.25s and have Sadal wear my 9.25s and have uh, Juliana wear a 9. Or Sadal can pay extra to get a shoe Would he still buy a 9.25? No. No. I'm talking about how many should I make. Okay? Um, you should take a Here's an idea. Ready? A certain amount of well, should you find the mode? I should do some research, maybe, right? Should I ask? What's your, how many size, or what's your size? 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 Size? Do you see how, what I'm doing right now? I'm researching it, right? If I knew, if I knew what each person's sizes were, then I would make the, the, the appropriate sizes, right? And everyone would get a shoe. And, Let's just assume that I could sell every shoe that I make. Wouldn't that be smart of me as a business person to make just enough, right? Because what if you make too much? 
Overproduction. Overproduction, right? You lose money. What if you make too little? Underproduction. Loss of business, right? Let's say I let's say I sell enough and then like I get to Kaylee and I'm like, oh man, I don't have your size. How's she gonna feel? She'll be upset, right? And I'll be upset too because that's lost business. I can't sell her something I don't have. Does that make sense? Here's another example. Let's say you uh, make uh, music, okay? This one's out to you, Brayden. So let's just say you make music. What are you doing? Oh, okay, cool. So you make music and then, has anyone ever heard of like Google Analytics? No. Or like YouTube Analytics or anything like that? Oh, yeah. That's Google Analytics, okay? okay. So what is you, YouTube Analytics then? Uh, well, I use SoundCloud Analytics. I actually have okay, what do that? What is what does SoundCloud Analytics give you? What does it tell you? It gives you like pretty much like your average like views and stuff like that, or how many days, how many plays you got on this day, how many plays last month. It just shows you like graphs and. Are there days that you get more plays than others? Yeah. What days? What days? Uh huh. I don't know. Is it like a Monday or a Tuesday? It just really depends. Okay, so there's no patterns there? What about age ranges? Is it to give you an age? Like, um, that's if I go SoundCloud Pro, but I don't want to pay for it. Okay, good. That's okay. So let's just say he does go SoundCloud Pro. It does actually give age ranges. And let's just say that Brayden's age range, that the people that listen to his music is like from... 35 to <laughs> okay, that's good. No, that's a good point, okay? So we all love Braden's music. You all go, but when Braden looks at his SoundCloud, it's like he has his 30, or his 18, or his high school students, whatever, 16 to 21, some people, but when he gets to 35 to 50, it's like he's got a huge following, okay? They love his song, Mercy, right? Right? So... <laughs> Now, he doesn't mind, right, because Braden knows that if he, you know, he, he likes his followers because they buy his music and they buy his merchandise and they go to his shows, right? So, what is he going to do when he makes music or a music video? I'm going to get a bunch of old people on my music video. Yeah, is he going to appeal to like a nine-year-old? Nope. What about to a 70-year-old? Yeah. No, what's his prime target? What's the, what's the age range? 50. Good, okay. That's called marketing, okay? So we need to understand how that works so that you, you make good decisions, okay? So today's conceptual. I'm going to show you how to make the box and whisker plot um, so that you know how to, and how to read it also, okay? Here we go. And this is a big idea, so... A box and whisker plot provides the distribution of one item in a population. So, for example, the one item might be a set of shoes in the population of San Dimas High School, okay? Or the one item could be uh, Braden's uh, music for the population of all SoundCloud listeners, right? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, cool. Here we go. So let's start with this. You're going to work along with me. There's only two examples, so you're going to write what I write, okay? So here's some data I collect. Let's say I was making my shoe company Rinks Kinks, like kicks, but kinks, get it with a Y? Okay. Rinks Kinks. Okay. Okay. So shoe sizes. They're all are they all organized right now? No. No. So I want to make meaning of the data. This is all random. I don't know what it's saying. It doesn't even tell me like how many shoes to make. It just is all pretty random, okay? So what I could do right now is I could organize it. So let's organize it together. What's the smallest number up there? Two eggs. Oh, sorry, before that, let me go back one more thing. Oh, okay. How many people did I ask their shoe size for? Turn to your neighbor and tell them how many people I asked or sampled. How many people did I sample? <laughs> How many people did I sample, everyone? 15. 15. And in math, we call that N. N is our sample, so we say there's 15 people. That's just a side note. Our N is 15. Okay? So here we go. Now we're going to start organizing it, okay? What's the smallest number? Six. Okay, good. Watch what I do. I'm going to take six, and then I'm going to cross one of the numbers out. Okay, what's the next smallest number? Six. Good. Six again. I'm going to write it down and cross it out. Okay? Next number? Six. Good. Next number? Seven. Next number? Seven. Seven. Good. Now keep going. Keep going. Eight. Next. Nine. 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 
Now it's just playing for you, right? Good job, you kids are so fast. Okay. 12, 12, and did I get all my 12s? 4 12. 4 12. 4 good. And what am I doing to make sure I count all of them? Crossing them out. Crossing them out, right? Okay, at this point, I just organized it from least to greatest. Y'all see that? Yes. Did I count all of them? Okay, let's count. Let's make sure I, I count all of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 14. Does that match my sample size? Yes. Cool. So we're good, right? We did a good job. <laughs> okay. Next, what we're going to do is figure out the range. So this is now from fifth grade math. What's the smallest or the minimum? What's the largest? Okay, good. So watch up here. When you do a box and whisker plot, it has to be... It has to be precise and it has to be measurable, okay? So watch what I'm going to do. You see how I have graph paper on my screen? So I'm going to make one of these intersection points 6 and one of them 12. So you see it starts with 6 and each of these large spaces is going to be one whole number, okay? So it's going to go 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And notice how I'm doing this very precisely. Okay, so when you, you have to make a scale first, okay? It's almost like you're going to put a ruler by your paper, okay? So you might want to take a ruler when you do this part. It has to be precise, okay? Who wants a ruler for their notes? Anyone? Good catch. Okay. All right, so now my minimum is 6, so I'm going to write down 6 on as a point above my ruler, and then I'm going to go to 12 as my point above my ruler, and I'm going to draw a line. This line represents my population. Would you all agree that 100% of the people I asked are on this line? Yeah. Okay. Can you bring me your phone, please, Braden? You're on it too much. Thank I'll you, sir. I was just looking at my analyticals. <laughs> okay. Let's do that a little later. Back to the... Um, okay, so how many people in my sample? 15. Good. Would you agree that 15 out of 15 people is 100% of my sample? Yes. Good. Would you agree that this line represents 100% of my people? Yes. Good. You all follow me right now? Yes. Okay, good. So now we want to take the median. Turn your neighbor and tell them what's the median of the sample, the middle number. Okay, how many total people are there? 15. Good. Let's say I, I line these 15 people up in a row. Who's standing exactly in the middle? Number nine, right? So, like, for me, I do this. I go 15 divided by 2 is 7.5, and I just round up, right? I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.5, which is just the 9 right here, right? And I'm just going to, I always double count. I check the right side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 people here on the right side, some people on that side. This 9 is in the middle right here. So, you see that 9? That's my median. So I'm going to go on my graph and put nine, uh, line here. So let's all make sure you're all writing along with me because you're only getting two examples. Okay, back to my question a minute ago. How many percent of my sample is from 6 to 12? How many percent of my sample is from 6 to 12, everyone? 100. Good. So if that's 100, how many percent of my sample is from 6 to 9? 50, 50. Good. How many percent of my sample is from 9 to 12? 50. 50, y'all see that? Yes. Is this exactly in the middle of both sides? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly in the middle. Now, that's this problem. Now, check this out. Now we're going to divide this 50% by 2. What's 50 divided by 2, by the way? 25. Keep that in the back of your head. Here we go. So now, what's the median? Eyes up here. What's the middle number between the 6 and the 9 here, if you were to take the median of these numbers? 7.5. There's no 7.5 7. up here. 7. 7. Seven. Okay, how many numbers are from 6 to 9? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? So what's what's 8 divided by 2? 4, but aren't there two middle numbers then? So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, this is a middle number, and this is a middle number. These two 7s are a middle number. So what's the median? 7, right? Since these two numbers are the middle one, 7 is my middle number. So I put a line right here. Yes? How can you count 9? Because that is, we're going to pretend that this is a rank, this is the end point and this is the end point. What's the median of these two end points? Does that make sense? Yep. That's a great question. Okay. So, again, what was half of 50? <coughs> Good. So, would you agree that this whole line from 6 to 12 is 100%? Uh -huh. yep. Would you agree that from 6 to 9 is 50% of my population? Yes. yes. Good. Would you, would you agree that... From 6 to 7 is 25% of my sample. 
Yeah, it is. But you see how small that is? That means 25% of the people have size 6 to 7. Does that make sense? Yes. And from size 7 to 9, 25% of the people have a size 7 through 9. You all following me? Is it the same amount of people that have a 6 to 7 as 7 to 9? Mm -hmm. No. Actually, yes, it is. Um, but do you see how the range for 25% for is wider here? <coughs> so there's less people distributed distributed across. Okay, now let's go from 9 to 12. Bless you. From 9 to 12, what is the median from 9 to 12? Okay, turn your neighbors from 9 to 12. What's the median from these numbers? Okay. What are the two middle numbers? 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. What are the two numbers? 11 and 12. What's exactly between 11 and 12? 11.5. 11 <laughs> okay. I just divided again. Would you agree that this line divides this 50% into 2? So 25% of the people are here. Look at how 25% of the people are in here. That means 25% of the people have a size 11 and a half to 12 shoe. Y'all see that? Okay, cool. And then we draw this box. And this box represents the interquartile range, or IQR, meaning there's 50% of the people inside of here. That's where most of your people are. There's 25% here in this little part. And there's 25% of the people here on this little part. Okay? This is called IQ, uh, I'm sorry, Q1, quarter 1. This point here, this is called your uh, median, and this is Q3. Okay? And we use this to understand the population. So, where are, uh, what size do most people have? Yeah, there's a huge, peop there's a quarter of the population has a size of 11.5 to 12, right? It doesn't look like it's a lot, but that means there's a lot of people in this small area. Yes? Good, turn your neighbor, tell them why the box is different. That's a great question. Go. On number two now, I'd like you to uh, work with your neighbor to put them in order, okay? This is me sampling a bunch of students to see what their grade is and see what I'm trying to figure out is my grade, is my grade too, uh, grading too hard or too easy or just right, okay? Put them in order, please, okay? You can work with your group. Go. Everyone. Next. Five. Keep going. 59. I'll go really slow. Keep going. 59, then. Uh huh, next. Nice. Keep going. Good. Good. Nice. Good job. Mm, very good. Okay, good. Okay, so. Went a little too fast here. Okay, so. I got a question. How many students did I sample just now? How many total students did I sample? 16. 16. How many people? 16. Did I reorder 16 numbers here? No. Yes. We asked. Yes. Wait, 60 or 16? Yeah, we did. I just want to make sure we know that. We did reorder them correctly, okay? Now we've organized the data. Now we can make sense of it, okay? What's the smallest number in our data? What's the largest number? So what's a good range to go from if the smallest is 52, the largest one is 99? Good. What was that again, Juliana? 50 to 100. Good. 50 to 100. And notice, eyes up here. I'm using a ruler. I have the graph paper going, but on your paper, you might want to use a ruler. You want to use a perfect scale. So I have 50, 60, 70. And notice how there's even equal spaces. I'm being precise here. We want to make sure we're precise when we do this part, okay? Cool. All right. What's the minimum and maximum? What's the minimum? This gets easier when everyone participates. What's the minimum, everyone? 52. What's the maximum? Ashley, what's the maximum? Okay, I just want to make sure you're participating. I know, that's why I'm giving you a hard time. I know. Thank you, I appreciate it.
Okay, so back to you, Seth. How many percent of people have a grade from 52 to 99 in my sample here? How many percent? Good, 100. Do you all agree with Seth? Good job, Seth. Okay, so now I want to divide my sample into two even pieces. If I were to line all these people up in a row, who's standing exactly in the middle? Or which people are standing exactly in the middle? 77 and 78. Good. So what's the average of 77 and 78? Uh, I know. 155. Nope. That's, uh, that's when we add them together. Oh, yeah. Average. Oh, you want me to divide it by 2? Yes, please. Okay. 155 divided by 2 is going to be uh, 77.5. Good. So that, this, um... Zachary. Okay. Okay, 77.5 is going to be exactly in the middle. Okay. So, back to you, Seth. Would you agree that from 52 to 99 is 100% of the people? Okay, would you agree then that from 52 to 77.5 is 50% of the people? Half of them? Okay, would you agree the other half are right here? Yes. You follow me right now? Do both sides look even? Yeah. Do they look even, everyone? Yeah. No, this side's a little bit bigger. The left side's a little bit bigger. <laughs> okay. Yes. So what's the middle number from 52 to 77 now? What's the middle number? Or numbers? Good, 59.64. Back to you, kids. What is the, if there's two middle numbers, how do you get the average of the two? Okay, what's the middle number then? Good, 61.5. So I'm going to put that line down. That's my Q1. And then I have two middle numbers here. I'm going to go a little more quickly because we're running out of time. 84 plus 86 divided by 2 is going to be 85. And then we write, draw a line in the boxes. And this, this now represents our information here. Okay, based upon this, I see that if this is my test averages or my class average for my class, I notice that 50% of my students are getting a 77.5 or less. Okay? Which is not great, okay? And I'm looking how, what quarter of those students are, what percentage of those students are actually getting a C. Well, a quarter of the students are getting from a 61.5 to 77.5, which that's not good, right? That means that the other 25% is lower than an F, right? Over here, I'm noticing half the people are doing better than 77.5 or more, with actually more people being in the higher A bracket. Okay? Does that make sense? Question. Um, oh, did you take like from seventy eight to ninety nine?